perfect transition. Oh, except I had the fail button on. I'm just getting started early on the fail button, that's all. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Just finished last night, late live. Oh, good, Rick. Sorry about last night. <laughs> last night was a little discombobulated. I spent a lot of time trying to work out a uh, blueprint. But good news is another Justin, who is much better at it than me, did manage to figure out what to do with the blueprint and uh, made it already on the Home Assistant Blueprints page. So if you go to the Home Assistant Blueprints page, which is the community page, Blueprint Exchange, I think that's probably where you should bookmark that. In fact, I'm going to bookmark that. Blueprint Exchange, bookmark. Home, I'm just going to go, yeah, HA Blueprints. HA Blueprints. Thanks for subscribing. We got new subscribers already. Just getting started. Hudson Drive Band and somebody else right before that. Thank you. Ba -bum. Ba -na -na. Bum, 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 bum. We do have a... Let's see, he just put it in here last night. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Notifications. I guess we can search. Can we search these? Yes. He put my name in it. There we go. Twitch stream, turn on light. So here's a, 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 a blueprint for what we were trying to do last night. Oh my gosh, everybody subscribing. Goodness sakes. Thank you very much. All right. Let me go say hi to everybody. Private Stewie was first. Eric Oaktree. I was starting to worry that nobody was going to show up. <laughs> I was worried. A couple minutes go by and I'm like, oh, there's no, there's no viewers. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, anyways, all right, me lobby's here, Mr. Fixers, Alessandro says ciao. How's it going, everybody? Oh, Piston Broke is here. How you been, buddy? How you been? Roman Keys, happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Just finished last night. All right, all right, all right. Perfect transition. Fail. Boom. <laughs> Carlos here. Nick and Nate. All right. Hello from Germany. How's it going? Ahoy. Ahoy, Sven. Ahoy, mateys. <laughs> How's it going? Oh my gosh. What is that? What is DKDKIS? What is that? Is that a place, Henrik? Is that a place? Hello from Holland. How's it going, everybody? No viewers equals no one love you. No. That may be true, Yona. <laughs> my mama still love me. Mm. So last night we did um, eventually get the Twitch thing working and I did a little bit of work afterwards and um, determined that to set up the Twitch integration, you really, you, you know, we were right. I went and checked my key. All you have to do is grab that client ID. You have to make a, you make a, a an app or whatever, and then you put that client ID. Man, we were getting all the subscriptions today. Do Pixels go down in price after the holidays. Yeah, Javi, they, they, well, you know, if you're buying them on like Amazon, maybe not, but I know some of the like big sellers like, um, like RGB man and some of the guys that sell direct from China and such, Ray Wu and those guys, I think, whoever they are, I don't know, but they usually will have a, um, uh, I don't remember what they call it, but basically an aftermarket or an after holiday sale or whatever. Mark Sutton cheered. Thank you, Mark. Incoming hype train. <laughs> Thank you. Portugal's here. Sebastião. So yeah, they're usually, so if you want to buy a, a big batch, uh, there's always a big, uh, usually a, a sale. Those, uh, if I mean, and this only comes from me and chatting with Mike because I'm not a big pixel retailer or anything, but he said, Mike is RGB man. Uh, I know he has done big sales in January and tries to put in a big order, um, but <gasps> Who did it this time? Binary Nexus. You guys and your screamers. Thank you very much for the donation and for giving me a heart attack. Larsar from SoCal. How's it going down there? I know 1080p. That's new. I know. I figured it out. I figured it out. I, you know, I said it. I said it that way to do 1080p a while back, but I don't know. I think what happened was uh, every once in a while, Streamlabs will update 
And I think I had set it to 1080 and then something updated. Because I even had like Frank go through how he has his setup and everything, but whatever. Anyways, I'm glad it's I'm glad it's uh, high definition so you can see all my freckles. <laughs> can we look at the uh, Aleka integration again? Could not get mine to work. You bet we could. So you want to look at the um, you want to look at the Amazon Echo Media Player. Javi, I've got a bushel in the in transit. That's all I can tell you. It will not happen before Christmas. Um, it will not happen before Christmas. So, but I've got another thousand on the way. Um, and as soon as they go back in stock, I will. I, as soon as I get that thousand uh, here, I will put them back in stock. I had too many back orders last time, and it, we got in big trouble with with. We had so many people waiting, and I did not. That makes my that makes my my anxiety too high, and then uh and then we tried to fill like I think we filled four hundred orders in two days or something, and it was just craziness. And I'm I'm getting messages now from people where we messed up, right? Like they ordered two and we sent them one, or you know things like that. So I I don't want to I don't want to get myself in that kind of hole anymore. So I'm gonna wait till they're in stock and then and then we'll post them as in stock. Uh, the idea is to complete the recommended starting of home assistant. I hope I have one on the new flat as soon as I can move in. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, I was, I've been trying to get an idea of how I want, how I would do this as a new user. And, uh, I, I still haven't really latched on a hundred percent to it. I think I like my, my list that we had. We can look at my list. Oh, somebody was wanted to look at the media player, so we'll do that too. Oops. Move this. So you don't see all my secret stuff. All my top secret stuff. So you don't see Dawson's Christmas list. Right, Dawson? What? Oh? <laughs> the notifications worked. Mine did too, actually. My lights came on down here when I started streaming, so that's good. Um Good morning, Thomas. And good morning, Quindor. How you doing? I can't believe you were awake at four o'clock in the morning. Did you just barely wake up again? I hope you had just now you slept until now. What's the hydrate perk do? I don't, I did it and nothing happened. Oh, sorry, Binary Nexus. I don't know. It was supposed to give me some sort of announcement, but I guess it didn't. I'm sorry. It means I should take a drink of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I'm going to lose it to Dawson. <laughs> um... Aleka, that's right. Peter wanted me to do Aleka. Philip says, have I done experimentation with Falcon Player? Yes, I have. And I haven't done too much with it. Um, I haven't done too much with it, but I know it's really good. If you wanted to do, um, if you want to do the big shows, the big, big shows, then that's what uh, you're going to want to do, right? So if you're going to want a big, big shows with, uh, with props and the mega trees and the candy canes and the talking faces and the matrix and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to want to use the uh, Falcon player, whether you use it on a Falcon board or whether you use a Culp board, you'll want to, you'll want to do that eventually. Game room, let LED strip go red. Once you or Frank are streaming. Did it work me Loby? Did it work? That's awesome. All right. We're going to do the, let's do the choo choo train. Okay. Let's look uh, again at the Aleka media player. And maybe what we should do is, uh, should we delete it and start it over so you can see? Tell me what problem you're having, Peter. What what part are you getting stuck on? You said it didn't work for you. What part did you get stuck on? Um, because in order to do it, we first had to install hacks. Uh, and then we had, uh, here it is. This is the Aleka Media Player. When you, if you have, um, you know, the two-factor authentication, that throws a wrench in there but it still should be okay. Make sure that everything is up to date, like your, your home assistant's the latest version, your Aleka Media Player's the latest version. Twitch notification worked, came through quicker than my mobile app. Yes, Mark, all right. So the Twitch thing worked. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Synchronize a bunch of DigiUnos to work together using WLED, I'm such a noob. <laughs> yeah, Javi, you can. Yes, you can. Um, you know, we we we... <laughs> We tinkered around with that and uh, there is a sync, there's a sync setting 
So if you go to your go to your WLED boards. Oh, that one doesn't want to work again. That's oh, why that one disconnects. It's sitting right there. Oh no, there it goes. It's working. Slowly, but it's working. Um, so a couple things you have to do. If you go in config and sync interfaces, there are there's a number this UDP port right here. This has to be something unique. So we're gonna do two one two three two. Okay, two one two three two. We're gonna just copy that, and then we'll save that, and then I'll open up another one. Two one seven. This is okay, and we'll go to config, and we'll go to sync interfaces, and by default they'll all be this twenty one three two four. I think maybe not. Whatever, anyways, make sure that your UDP ports match on the ones you want to sync together. And then, it should sync together. We'll make this one the master. Let's see if we get this to work. We tried this before and it, and it didn't work. We missed the hype train. Did we miss the hype train? I'm gonna trigger somebody's cat. Must have got sync working. I, I think I did. The slow boat from eBay. What's the second port for? Uh, Decon one. I'm not 100% sure what the second port for is for. That's new for uh, version 11. Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Nice. <laughs> Oh man, my my uh, matrix is struggling this morning. Struggling, and my cats. Thank you. You're welcome, Josh. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> it, um, I've done a really good job of answering questions when you do the at with the, the ask thing. So I'll keep answering questions for a few minutes. But if if you ask a question and I don't answer it or I don't see it, if you do the tilde ask and then put your question in. It will go into a special Discord channel that I will read, uh, you know, when we get to the end of the stream or um, or at some point. Okay. All right. So let's try changing this. That didn't really do anything. Yep, that worked, but it didn't sync. So I think in my, I think, I think it's still an issue with my, um, with my network, not allowing them to connect together. Yeah. Cause they really are not happy. Oh, and it goes back to the streaming thing because I'm streaming. It checks the stream and it turns them on a certain thing. If there's, if I'm streaming. Yeah, they're not syncing. Mine are not syncing. And we had that problem before. So whether it's me or whether it's, you know, whether it's my network or whether it's something else. Um, all right. So let's see, Peter, is when you get to the authentication side, it freezes at the point when I have to approve it in the Aleka site and return to Home Assistant. Are you trying to do the media player, Peter? You're not trying to do the media player then. You're trying to do, are you trying to do the the thing where you do it without uh, Nabucasa? Because I think with the media player, with Aleka media player, you I don't think you have to go to their site. You just, um, use this. That channel only shows up to admins? Probably, Jacob. I don't know for sure. It's in the uh it's in it's in the um live stream. It says live stream questions. My handlers aren't here today so far. We haven't seen Blade or Sir Good Enough, so my my hand, Mark is the next closest thing. <laughs> Mark Sutton. <laughs> thank you very much, Roman Keys. Thank you, thank you. We'll just play something fun. 
Only Discord mods. Oh, there he is. Sorry. I didn't see you, sir. Good enough. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. See? Okay. Now I'm feeling be much better. Now I have my safety net. Okay. So the one through the hacks. That's weird. That's weird. So I don't know what, uh, what problem you might be having. Nick just hooked up the Dig Uno. I quoted you already before, did I? Oh, well. I'm sorry. Oh, the notifications worked. That was you that said that. I'm sorry. Well, for some reason, you're it's not blue. Oh, it's because I have dark mode on. If I, if I have dark mode on, then it doesn't show up blue. I'm always looking for the blue. Um, Peter, yeah, I'm not sure what to tell you about that, buddy. So you put in... The first thing it does... Now let's play around with it again. Let's play around with it again. We can try. This was an important one, so let's let's try and walk through it again. Um, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. I actually have, believe it or not, a third instance of Home Assistant I can play with. <laughs> Okay, let's go to, let's go to Proxmox. Proxmox, donde estas Proxmox? There he is. And we will fire up my playground. Home assistant here. This Start it. Uh, let's read the questions. I can read the questions here. Is there any way to get WLED working through HomeKit natively, or does it need to run through something like HomeBridge? Evan, I, I don't know. Um, I don't use HomeKit, really, very much. And uh, I don't know how they would link, other than I know they would link through Home Assistant if you also had HomeKit, and I guess it was HomeBridge installed with Home Assistant. So I'm sorry, I can't really give you much help with HomeKit directly. Um, I'm trying to think of a way that those two could link together. I'm not 100% sure how they would. Oh, that's not the right one. I think it was 90, wasn't it? No. Yeah, a 190. What? Um, all right, next question. Where can I get the triple cable that extend the wires in your video? Uh, Mr. Fixers, I've got... Uh, there's a couple places you could go. If you go to drz's.com slash products, anything that I have ever linked in a video, um, I try to uh, keep track of here. So there should be something here that would be like three conductor wire or something. Jumper wires, jumper wires. Or not. Okay, in this case, it's not there. That's probably because it's in Amazon only. So uh, the other place is Amazon Shop Dr. Z's. And then down here, there's all this freaking cool LEDs stuff. And this is the wire right here. This is 20 gauge. If that, I mean, that should be good enough for you. If you, I think there's, if you bounce around Amazon, you can find some that's probably 18, but I wouldn't go any 
smaller than 20. Uh, I can just paste that in there for you. And then the next question, Helipilot, once you have a sequence in X lights, is the next step to use X schedule to get it to repeat? I would think so, UK Helipilot, but that would be a great question for the pixel heads because I have not committed myself completely to X lights just yet. Seamus is here, which, um, Gbox question starting a business with providing DIY solutions. Give it a go. I haven't, you know, flicks my switch. I haven't watched your whole video yet, buddy. I'm sorry. I keep, I keep getting started on it. My mind has been quite the blur. Um, so Seamus, I didn't fix the blueprint, but somebody else did. I don't know why this was, this is not showing up. That's a real bummer. Man, oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay, well, so much for that. This is, this is all just, we're on the fail bus this morning. Um, so no, I did not fix the indentation, but somebody else made a blueprint for it right here. So there it is. And it's actually pretty good. Very good. Justin did a much, much better job. <laughs> it can't be reached page. Looks like a few of your home assistant attempts. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, I was trying to show, I was trying to go through this again for Peter, but I don't know. Um, I'm afraid to delete it and start over. Um, I guess we can uninstall it, see what happens. Oh my goodness, Martin. Noticed a major bug on your YouTube channel about Paige. You said Legos. The good people. Oh, <laughs> rolling their eyes. Oh, it's Lego. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone if I said Legos. <laughs> they are Lego. We are Borg. Oh, needs HTTP, not HTTPS. Do you think so? Sure enough, sure enough, there it is. <laughs> okay, well, let's go in here and do a bunch of updating first. Because that's the first thing you got to do. Update until the cows come home. Hey, Blade's here. <laughs> Plural for foot pain. That's pretty good. Thank you, Troy, for pointing that out. You fixed it for me. Almost missed the stream. Some call it fun. How's it going? That's too funny, Martin. Too funny. Lego. 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 Now I can set channel moderator and admin. Can only see certain rooms. Man. Here's where we can do Node Red. N Blades here, we can do Node Red. Cluedo. What's Cluedo? I don't know Cluedo. No pressure, but I thumbs up the video. Thank you, John. Which LED strips do you recommend for inside decorative? In which brand? So, so uh, Dan Figgy. Uh, in, inside, you don't need waterproofing stuff. And probably in most cases inside, you're going to want strips instead of strings. So when I say strips and strings, you know what I'm talking about? 
the strings are have wire in between them and they they have the dangly bullet pixel looking things right so that's strings um you can still use those on inside projects like we put them on the christmas tree um and you could use them on other things um but for most of the indoor projects what you're going to want is ws2812 and it might say 12b or something it's fine ws2812 um and ip30 which is really just like dust proof or something it doesn't it, it's not waterproof at all so it doesn't have any extra silicone on it or anything um it's not in a sleeve or anything it's just a strip you can get the strips you can get the led density different sizes whatever um I, I watched you know i just did that video with zach and that goes through a little bit of that uh and then as far as brands go i have yet to find a brand that i would say is total garbage um the BTF lighting brand is pretty good. Well, you do need waterproof if you're putting them above the kitchen sink. Dynamite is right. And if you're putting them in the bathtub, IP30, I, uh, I think, is to keep the mice out. <laughs> Seamus, I have tried a couple of blueprints. Yeah, I did, actually. They're pretty good. They're, I mean, I, I think I haven't tried a lot of them, but I want to try some more. Um, so yeah, BTF lighting is good, but I, again, I haven't, I tried, I went to bang or to uh, AliExpress and I bought like a one meter strip of gosh, five or six different kinds, everything from the absolute cheapest to the most expensive. And when I got them home and looked at them and I even got like real up close and, and tested them out, tested the different current and everything. And to me, they were all pretty dang equal. Like I, I didn't see a very big difference. Not certainly not enough to justify, you know, spending a bunch of money on the most expensive ones or, or to say that this one brand is the only brand that's any good. I think any brand is going to potentially have some bad ones sometimes. These are, these are tiny little electronic things. They're making them really fast, um, really cheap. So you're going to get some dead on arrival or that won't last very long. Oh, and there you go. Quindor is a much more of an LED file, right? Quindor can tell you like, oh, these LEDs are, you know, stupendous and these ones are not. So, but for me, it's been, it's all been pretty much pretty generic. Okay, let's try it here. Let's do a Leica Media Player here. So Peter, this is for you. We're going to do it again. Add integration. Let's see if it's showing up here already. It's not. Okay, so we're going to go to the Home Assistant Community Store, which hopefully I have installed here, which I do not appear to have installed here. Okay, so we got to do that part again. <laughs> uh, let's make sure our supervisor is all set up. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, so Home Assistant Community Store. We did this just recently, but we'll do it again. Because when we did it, it seems like everything I've done in the last few streams has been just a struggle bus. Like I have made it like as hard as possible. And I don't know. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's my brain just crapping out on me or is it because I'm not, preparing myself for streams. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it has been a struggle bus. Okay. Installation. Here we go. Um, oh, so we decided that you could do it if you just run VS code, right? Because if you run VS code, then there's a command that you can type in. So let's install VS code. So that's going to be in the add-on store. We're going to install the community version of VS code right here. Okay. We're going to install that guy too busy, too bussy. <laughs> Is this what you have to look forward to when the blue arrives, Frankie? Do you have home assistant now? You learn more when things go wrong. Thank you. Some call it fun for being positive with me. <laughs> You're welcome. Dan Figgy. You are welcome. Oh, you know what else I would also uh, uh, 
those um, fairy lights, those pixie fairy lights are, are really good for indoor projects. I was looking at them. Actually, they say they're IP65, which means you could splash them with water. I wouldn't, it's, uh, you know, IP65, you don't want to submerge them in water, but you could get them wet. So, yeah, we're going to put that one in the sidebar. And we're going to start it up. Some call it fun doesn't sound too positive. <laughs> the VS Code method was too easy, right, Rasby? We got to do it a different way. Do I use Grafana? No, FM. I have installed Grafana, but I do not regularly use it. No. I have a degree in breaking stuck, <laughs> in breaking stuff and getting it stuck. Uh, can we move a snapshot from Home Assistant Docker to Home Assistant Blue? Yes, I'm pretty sure you can. I would expect that you can. I don't know. Um, I can't think of a reason not to, but I'm I'm willing to be wrong. So chat, tell me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> All right, open web UI. So here we're going to have Visual Studio Code. Great. Now we can go over here to the installation and there's all this other stuff. Like I, you don't actually have to do all this. You can do it through the, there's a command line instead of doing all this. Extract the contents, custom components. See, you don't have to do all this. Where's that command line one? Danish guide to hacks. Oh, look at that. Look at that guy. Hacks installation. Where was that other page? Did you guys, do you guys have it? The, the one with the command? Oh, here it is. Alternatively, you can install hacks using these Linux command line instructions. This is what we want. So when you have Visual Studio Code installed, you can have a command line down here. I don't remember how you get it. View. Terminal, new terminal, that's what we want. Great. So once we have this terminal open, can you guys all see this? Okay, good. So once we have this terminal open here in Visual Studio Code, we can take this line right here and run this script. Copy that guy. And then just right click. Nope, that didn't work. Uh, what did you guys say it was it had to do? Like Control Shift V. There it goes. Oh, and then we decided unzip wasn't not installed by default, but it will be at some future point, I'm sure. So you have to do apt get update first, right? And then apt get, look how good I'm remembering this. Apt get unzip. Dang it. What is it I'm supposed to do? How's it going? I'm learning. Right click. Impressive. Where would I recommend you run HassIO on a dedicated computer? Install unzip. Okay. I was so close. Install unzip. There we go. Um, I think it, a good place to run it is always going to be on uh, a dedicated machine of some kind. Raspberry Pi is a great choice. Right now they're saying the Odroid 2, uh, 2 or N2 is the best choice, but uh, Raspberry Pi has always been really good for getting started. Um, this should be a video. Raspy, I, I should get you to edit my live streams. <laughs> Chat is going wild. What did I miss? Okay. Now that we have unzip installed, we can install hacks. Great. Restart home assistant before you configure it. Okay. 
So that's it. So we've installed hacks. That's actually all we have to do, right? I think. Let's restart home system. There was something else maybe about like the... Oops. Something else about... Um, I know there's faster ways to do this, but... No more physics problem solving? No, Pedro, he got an A. Were you here the other night when we uh, were, when he was telling us he got his he got an A he got it from an, it was an F my dude had an F in physics hey Keaton's here how's it going Keaton hey we're actually just installing uh um Aleka Media Player again because somebody was having some troubles so I'm glad you're here Peter Keaton Taylor there is the is the mastermind uh, him and Alan I was got to give Alan some credit. Uh, Keaton and Alan are the masterminds behind Aleka Media Player. Too much pop, drink wine. <laughs> so if you have, uh, you know, whatever issue you might be having, probably Keaton has the answer. Sorry, Keaton, to put you on the spot like that. All right. So then what happens next? Restart Home Assistant. You can add it to your configuration. Assumes you have already completed the installation. Do we, will we still have to do this access token from GitHub? Yeah, I'm sure we do. Did the Home Assistant restart? It didn't look like it did. Did it? I don't think it did or else Home Assistant Community Store would have been over here. Unless it's an add-on. Run the script, restart home system. I think I don't know, I think it restarted. Oh, it's in integrations. Thank you guys. So integrations. Oh, and then home assistant community store. There's home kit for uh, whoever was asking about that. Home assistant community store. Should have a song. All right, so once you run that command line, then you have to go to integrations, add integrations, find hacks, and then start it up. Thank you, guys. Why am I the one doing the videos? You guys you guys know all the stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, thank you very much, Sean. Was on another site earlier this week. Someone asked about TV backlighting. They suggested a $500 Philips Hue solution. Pointed them your way with Raspberry Pi and Hyperion. Good for you, Shulin. You're doing the world a you're doing the world a great service by not giving five hundred dollars to Philips and instead supporting Hyperion, which is a fantastic open source project. And even if you made a twenty dollar donation, or if somebody made a twenty dollar donation, I'm sure it would be well received, and they'll get a better project and a result in the end, anyways. More Home Assistant dictions. Perfect description of hacks. <laughs> Shulin gets a graphic for that. He does get a graphic for that. Let's do this one, my favorite. Good job, Shulin. Paul Hibbert would be proud, yeah. No, Phillips Hugh. Okay, this is a funny little thing. You gotta read through all these and agree to all these funny things. I think it's funny. <laughs> it's, I understand, da 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 da. <laughs> Uh, okay, paste this, paste in this key to authorize hacks. Open GitHub logic device and paste in this key. You can all have my key. That's fine. Paste. Sweet. Oh, that's so nice. So you don't have to go and get all that, all that, um, whatever it's called, API key stuff. That's it. You're all set. Sweet. When you have done that, click submit. So the Home Assistant Community Store has really 
changed how it gets installed. Really easy. Great. So now the Home Assistant Community Store is going to show up right here. And then we can go to Integrations. Oh, it's still starting up. It's so, so it's got to load a bunch of information, right? Okay, so we'll do that. I'm going to go down and answer some more questions from the question page. Oh, oh, oh. I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. Uh, my question is something about nothing. <laughs> I know what you're doing. You were trying to show Sir Charles how to ask his Tasmoda question. Um, okay, would anyone know why this zone configuration is not working? Uh, we'll, let's put it up here, Alex. Let's see what you got. Uh, something is wrong with the zone configuration. What's it telling you? We, I, we probably, I mean, now we've got all your longitude and latitude stuff for your house. Um, sorry for sharing that, but, uh, you know, you can in, in home assistant. Now you don't have to, you don't have to edit a YAML file to do your, um, stuff on the map, right? There is a map page. So for your zones, you don't need to do a, a YAML file like that. You can just say, oh, I, here's the map. And that's actually not where my house is, so that's fine. <laughs> um, we can add a zone, name it like whatever, oh, secret bunker. <laughs> okay. And then we can move the secret bunker wherever we want it to be on the map and we can make it as big or as small as we want. Okay. So you don't have to edit your YAML file. In fact, I would suggest that you do it this way instead. So you've got your YAML file there with your coordinates in it. You can go to add a zone and you can just paste in your coordinates here and then you can give it a name. You can change what you can change this. If you wanted to make it a different, um, you know, icon, you can change the icon here. And give it a name, um, uh, haunted house, <laughs> right? And there you go. And then, and then you don't have to worry about it not working if, with, you know, if your YAML is messed up. Does that help? That should help you, Alex. That should help you. And then the other nice thing is if, so this is a, this is one that I can't really edit. I guess I can move it. Let me move it, didn't it? I don't know why. It's kind of funny that it's letting me move it around. Um, but you can't really edit it because I didn't create it in the UI like this. But for the ones that you create in the UI, you can go in and edit them later and you can change, um, you know, these to something, something else, right? Change the name and change the coordinates and all that stuff. Okay. Mega tree normal to have 16 strings as a minimum. Is that a question? Flicks my switch. There's your weather. Gnard. Gnarp. No. Oh, that's a, that's a sweet name of a place. Gnarp. That sounds like a great D and D character name. <laughs> I'm actually going to save that. Can I save that name? I'm going to copy that name. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make a note. Is there, is there like a little easy, like note post-it thing here in notepad? Sure. I'm going to paste that name in. Gnard. That's going to be my next D&D &D character. Gnard Nordenstig. <laughs> Errors in the log file. Okay. So you guys are looking for that. Great. So uh, let's see if community store has finished installing yet. I don't need this anymore. If anybody wants this, I guess I could put this here uh, so that you can find it easy. I can never get the MDI icons to work. I have sockets that are lights. What do I put for lights? Um, Dave Davies. How are you doing, by the way? I recognize your name. It's hard to forget that one. Um, is a 5 to 10 foot tree good starting project for an RGB startup? Yeah. Yeah, Aaron. That would be fun. I mean, there's a big difference between a 5 foot and a 10 foot tree. But yeah, I mean, a small tree, a five foot tree or something is a very good place to start. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, so 
let's see when what Dave when you can't get your icons to work you can't change your icons where are you trying to change them home assistant has gotten so good with uh being able to modify devices and stuff so like if i go to this thing here i should be able to go into the settings and right here i should be able to change the icon um and you can do you you know mdi i think mdi is by default um and the nice part is is if it will show up next to this if you've guessed right but if you haven't guessed right, you can go to the MDI website and you can find others. There's also Font Awesome, which is another bunch of icons you can use. Um, uh, MDI, what else would be? Snow or something. Uh, lamp. Lampy. So, yeah, MDI light bulb is good. You can also use Hass. Yeah, that one was Hass by default, it looked like. Um, oh, this is to edit a script. I don't even know. I don't even know what this script is about. <laughs> Something I worked on a long time ago, I'm sure. All right. Yeah, here's us. Here's a hello first live. We'll get some unicorns for you. And Bearded Tinker, thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. How you doing? That's Brendan, right? Is there a way to pull devices that are on an Amazon Echo but not integrated into the home system like GE My Touch smart switches? You want to pull them into home system? You would probably uh, would look for GE um, integration. Thank you, Bearded Tinker. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Ram Disk, hello from Michigan. Okay, so I think we've got, I think our... Okay, this now looks like our hacks is set up. Uh, now we're going to go into integrations and we're going to look for the Aleka Media Player, which is one of the top ones. And I don't know if this is because of number of downloads or what. I would, I would expect that it is one of the most downloaded, most important community uh, integrations. It's not an add-on, it's an integration. And then we install the latest version. If you wanna go wireless, Dig, Quad or Dig Uno seem like a good start, I would concur. If you need to go wireless, if you can go wired, go wired. Lots of hours of videos, but my first time catching live. Thanks a lot. Well, you're welcome, thanks for being here. It's almost, the most uh, has almost the most stars, yeah. And the what? So Sonoff Lan, Sonoff Lan has the most stars. Time to lock out the Amazon account again, yeah, Sir Charles. <laughs> we had to fix that. Let's hope we don't do it again. Let's hope we don't lock it out again. All right, pending restart. So here we got to go back to restart. So we're gonna go C, and we're gonna scroll down to server restart. Okay. Doot, 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 doot. Amazon password reset. Three, two, one. <laughs> two dolphins. This is your first live also. Well, let's see. What haven't we done yet? Let's do... It's probably time for more unicorns. I need to do some more. Make some more of these. There's never enough. Just finished setting up Raspberry Pi and Home Assistant. Rob, the number one thing you need to do now is uh, Google Drive backups. Google Drive backups. Google Drive backups. I wonder if my log files still look clean. My log files look horrible. You, you don't have any echoes, sir, good enough. What do you have? Do you have, um, you must have Google Home instead. When in doubt, unicorns. That's right, John. <laughs> when in doubt, unicorns. <laughs> I don't want to run wires, so I think one tree with a wireless controller will be fine. Don't want to run wires all over the yard. I can't blame you for that. Yeah, I can't blame you for that. Um, a, an ESP32 is going to give you better performance than an 8266. If you're going to be using X lights uh, to run your tree, which I'm sure you will. Um, so keep that in mind. And, and even if you got just a Dig Uno, uh, you're going to probably want an ESP32 instead of the um, 8266. So there will be, uh, there will, 
there will be a time coming when the Dig Unos will at least have the option of an ESP32 to come with them instead of an 8266. Doot, 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 doot. How do I set up Google Drive? Just find the integration? Yeah. And I did it on the, one of the live streams just a few days ago. Um, if you got a Dig Quad, then you're in good shape. If you got the Dig Quad, then you're in good shape because the Dig Quad will have the, uh, We'll have the 8266. Why the 32 over the 66? Just a better processor. Yep. The, the 8266 is the older version of the little Wi-Fi chip that basically is the brains of all of this. Thank you, baby. And um, the ESP32 is the newer, bigger brother that's only like a couple dollars more usually. Like, well, maybe a little bit more than that, but it's not a ton. Aaron, why are they suggesting the pie for what? I missed what somebody suggesting a pie. Somebody suggesting a pie for you to run your, oh, probably to run um, Falcon controller or something is maybe what they're talking about. Thank you, Dave. I would just use a dig quad with X lights with a power supply and that should be it, right? Yeah. I mean, you run X lights on your computer, you run... You set the dig quad with the power supply up on your tree and you're good. Tech Robot, first live. Okay, this might be a Leica Media Player telling me it's time to configure. It's about 50 other things as well. Nope, because I didn't finish it all right well now it's oh we had to do the restart so now we're going to add an integration and now we're going to add nope it's not going to be here it's going to be in the community store again okay fine there it is it should be there i must have just missed it I'm sure it's there. I just missed it. I know everybody's screaming at me. Chat is screaming at me. I'm sure it's here. Probably looked right past it. It's not there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Reinstall. I think DigiQuad can do 300 times four, so 1,200 nodes. Yes, Aaron, yes. Oh, thank you, Nick. I need to hear that sometimes. Somebody page the doc, John says. Somebody page the doc for Pete's sake. Sticker sheet went mad. I got my stickers in the UK. Thank you. Need to stick them. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. So I need to add a new integration, not search for ones that I already added, huh? Okay, 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 okay. But it wasn't there. Working on paging function. Looks like HA might have dropped some functionality. Oh, maybe. You know, we could do, um, Blade, let's do a, uh, we can do a, a unique, um, a unique, uh, webhook for each page er. Try a restart. Yeah, let's do. Let's do another restart. That's when in doubt, turn it off, turn it back on again, right? Let's try one more time though. Let's just try one more time. There it is. Now it's there. All I did was a shift refresh. So yeah, cache. 
I did like the way you had it though, Blade, because it was really nice that it was one, you know, one command in Discord or whatever, and it would pick out the user and do all that. So I did like that. Um, has anyone tried painting Permatrack? Uh, it comes painted, so it should be very, very paintable. We did have the ability. <laughs> Somebody broke it. All right, so when you get to this page, Peter, this is all for you, buddy. This is all for you. I'm actually gonna, oh, that, that actually is, you're gonna see this, so I guess it's okay. This is my Amazon stuff. And then the password, I'm pretty sure it hides it, but we do not want to do this again. Okay. So the first time all you can put in is this and this. Oh, Peter, is this maybe your problem? Is it a region problem? Are you in the US or are you somewhere else? Did you did you pick out which keystrokes, John? <laughs> it might not have been me. Let's go ahead and blame me. I I'm okay with that. I'm okay. We like to break things live and then fix them. That's right, Jacob. That's what we do. I'm going to change it to what are we breaking today? <laughs> that is a very clever name. I love that, Sir Good Enough, by the way. Okay, so the very first time that you open up this configuration, all you can put in is your email address and password for Amazon. It's going to give you a, a CAPTCHA and a an OTA if you have two-factor authentication, which hopefully you do, right? What does the I do on the right there, Thanos says? Oh, this one? <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> All right, we're going to submit that. And then it's going to say, here's a CAPTCHA. Hopefully, if it doesn't say, we just shut down your Amazon account. Oh, it's not even going to ask me for a CAPTCHA this time. Well, that's interesting. Okay. So it's going to send me a 2FA, which I cannot show you. So the 2FA code I just got here. Dot, 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 dot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's all it did. It didn't even ask me for a CAPTCHA. That's crazy. It did not even ask me for a CAPTCHA. And now I would bet if we go to the devices. If we go look at all of my devices, it's going to have like a ton of, uh, a ton of new media players. Yep. So these are all my Aleka media players. They're all, in, they're all integrated here now. So this is actually the third, well, I deleted it from my blue when we were getting started here, but this is the third one, the third home assistant instance that I have connected to my Aleka account to be able to use the media players. You need to run the Authy app on your phone for the 2FA responses? Uh, no, it just sends me a text. I, you do have to set up the 2FA through the Amazon website, if I recall. How many media players? Too many, Dave. Too many. Red, blue. Red, blue, 82. Red, blue. Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> All right. Um, that was a long dis that was a long thing for Peter. Is that okay, Peter? Did that help you? I mean, I, watching me do it right or watching me do it and have it work is probably not super helpful. All right? Dig quad Wi-Fi won't work, Garrett says. So you um, go through the steps. I did a video about troubleshooting, and and I had a guy. You guys heard me tell tell the story about the guy that I that I. I, I, I swore at, I called, anyways, I called him some names because he was being very rude to me. And uh, I'm, I'm all for, you know, I understand people are buying stuff and, and I want to provide, provide them what they're looking for. Um, but I don't think anybody, not even the hamburger flipper at McDonald's deserves to be treated rudely 
by a customer, no matter what. I don't care how much money you're spending, especially if you're only spending a few dollars. Yeah. So anyways, I did not tolerate rudeness from this particular customer of ours from the website. And uh, anyways, he sent me back his device. And the problem with it was simply that the the uh, chip on the the ESP32 or the 8266 had not been flashed. And Quindor has uh, brought the hammer down on the factory that was putting these things together for us because we we have now come to know that we did have uh, a significant number of these devices uh, go out unflashed. Uh, I haven't seen any more tickets. I haven't set up the form, so I'm probably getting them through my old form blade. And that's one of the things that keeps me up at night is I still haven't done that. But we have fixed the flash issue. So we know now that all the new ones will definitely be flashed, but most likely. So if you plug it in and you don't see w, uh, WLED AP show up, then probably what you need to do is reflash it. Um, do we need to, do we need to, uh, go through how to flash? We probably don't. I flashed it, but when I do try to connect, it will disappear. When you try to connect, when you try to connect to the access point, the WLED access point will disappear. Was that really the guy that was in the stream the other day? Oh, I don't know. Was it binary nexus? I didn't, I didn't, was he like in the stream commenting? I doubt it, but it might've been. No towering. I don't know what that means, Gary. Ring or nest? Gosh, neither, Dave. Certainly not ring. Uh, I can't connect it to the Wi-Fi. Oh, which, by the way, not to put you on the spot there, Quindor, but um, do you have, are you, are you planning a day to do uh, a compiling of WLED? Because I would love to learn how to compile WLED. Because some of these, sometimes maybe I'm, I'm thinking some of these um, issues with the, you know, people having issues with the access point, like maybe, I don't know what Garrett's issue might be, but I know that my issue is still, it still exists with not being able to connect to access points. And that's my network just hating itself. Um, but maybe that's uh, something that could be alleviated if people would put in the, um, you know, put in their Wi-Fi information during compiling, and then it will just connect as soon as you start it up. 11.1 was just released and cleaned up some things. You could try that, Garrett. You could also try that. Sorry, when I tried to connect to Wi-Fi in the dashboard. So, Garrett, do you get the do you get the initial splash screen that says go to the controls or put in the Wi-Fi information? You get that screen. Also included a part to preset Wi-Fi details. Awesome. Thank you, Squindor. I'm excited to see that. That will be very, very useful. So I'm glad you're doing it because I, I don't know it and it would take me a long time. Okay, so you do get to that page. Okay, well, that's good. And then and then from there, you're trying to go to the Wi-Fi settings and it's and at that point it's freezing or giving you troubles. How are you powering it? It could be a um it could be that it's browning out. Um are you powering it on? the with the dig uno or dig quad connected or are you powering it by usb it should work on either but sometimes the usb um doesn't provide enough power and you can get it you can you can get a brown out where it just kind of fails with fixed network support <laughs> oh gosh scott i <laughs> help me fix my network um what were we going to do? What was the title of this stream? <laughs> I'd like it to go through. Sarcastro. All right, let's go. Let's answer a couple questions down here from the from the questions. Can you run through this calculator? Let's check out this calculator. Let's see what it says. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is very interesting. I've not seen this before. Okay. This is really cool. Um, all right. So let's see. 
This. So how high are you going to make it? So let's let's pretend we're going to build a, a mega tree, and we're going to make it six foot high. Uh, yeah. Uh, the top diameter, sure, one foot. The bottom would be six foot. Oh, cool. This gives you an idea of what it would look like. That to me looks a little bit short and fat. So let's make it something more like this. Oh, that looks a little bit too skinny. That looks good. So we're going to make it four foot tall and that the bottom circle is four foot, six foot tall and the bottom one is four foot around. Auto calculate height from lights per string and light spacing. Oh, number of strings. 16 is a good number. Uh, space to the top light, inches to the top light. Oh, from the top, from there to there. Okay. Space for the bottom. Okay. Inch spacing. Okay. Oh, good. So then what it gives you, so you put in what you're going to build as far as your tree. This is really cool. Whose is this? Lightshowhub.com. Huh? So this tells you now how to build it. So this, it, it gives you all kinds of, this is fun ge geometry. Tells you what the circumference is of the circle at the top. Tells you what the circumference is of the circle at the bottom. Then it tells you the diameter at the top and we, these dimensions we, we put in there. Uh, let's see, what does it tell you about the strings? 16 strings. It says each string is going to need to be six foot three inches, thereabouts. Uh, if, you're, if you're going three inches between the lights, you're going to have 24 lights per string and 384 lights total. I love it. Then it tells you if you're going by point. Oh, yeah. So it's telling you you're going to be point six amps per string times 16. So nine amps total. I wonder what that is. So 24 per string. So that's actually a pretty conservative number. That's not that's that's a decent number. Where's the mega this? Oh, where is this mega tree calculator? Somebody posted it earlier, but I'll post it again right here. Um, and then, oh, you know what I was wondering? Is this, is this all the way around the tree or is this a half a tree? That's a half a tree. Good. I think in most cases you only need half a tree, right? You only need 180. You don't need 360. Wow, dude, this thing's awesome. Wow. Somebody really put some time to this. Okay. It tells you the Watts per string. Fine. I guess these are probably, yeah, this is, must be assuming 12 volt lights. Correct. I don't, did I see us? A, a spot where you could look at that. Yeah. So here you can put in what type of light. So if you're going to use pixels, you're going to use 12 volt pixels. And this has got it at 60 milliamps per pixel, right? So that's the really conservative. So you're definitely going to be safe uh, at that estimation because it's likely going to be lower than that when you actually turn them on. So then this tells you that you need a 350 watt power supply, which is probably going to be, well, 350 at 12. Volts is 20, some, uh, not quite 20, right? 15 amp, maybe something like that. Um, and only one power supply. That's awesome. What do you guys think of that? No results. Same problem. Not possible to enter my Wi-Fi in the ESP. Do not know what happens. Restart again. Log in WLED. Tried. Changed Wi-Fi. So, Aaron, uh, Erwin, uh, um, do you have special characters in the password or do you have settings in your router that um, limit new devices or anything funny like that? Because if you're getting to the point where, where you can put, oh, it needs to be 2.4 gigahertz. That's another really important thing. Yes. Thank you. Zappy zap zap, which is a sweet username, by the way. Nice. You get this just because you have a cool, super cool username. Zappy zap zap. <laughs> so that's probably a uh, one potential that I have I've overlooked, but it needs to be 2.4 gigahertz, not five. Was amazing. Got me hooked. 8266 devices, ESP home. Just wanted to say thanks. You're welcome, Brian. I'm sorry. I got you hooked, but welcome to the rabbit hole. Do I recommend raspberry Pi camera to work with home assistant? Not really, Rob. Not really. I tried, um, I tried using Raspberry Pi zeros and cameras, uh, thinking that that would be a really great way to do cameras, you know, that would be very sort of open source and, you know, local only and a bunch of that stuff. But, um, 
they for for what you have to invest in setting them up and even just the cost of a Raspberry Pi Zero W and the camera, um, you're you're better off with other kinds of cameras. When is the new ESP32 replacement coming? Good question, Home Ace. I don't know for sure. It's it's in the works right now. You can still just use a Mini 32 on your Dig Uno if you wanted to do that. I'm all sold out of them. I was selling just the ESP32s for people who wanted to replace the 8266. There will probably come a time, maybe in the next, I don't know, Quindor's here, he can tell us, but maybe six months from now, we where maybe less, where we won't be using the 8266s anymore. A little late, can't keep up with all the, the streams. Hey, Fisk. I can't keep up with all the streams. Sound is cutting in and out. Oh, no. Made my newest prototype today. All looking good so far, but more to test. Quindor does such a good job with testing. Leading space on the password breaks a lot of things. There you go. Sure, good enough. Yeah. And I know there was a time where special characters were a problem as well. My password is something like that. If it's a space, is that, that's not a space though, right? Erwin. Man, I wish I could do more. I wish I could do more house calls. Like I, if I, if I had the capacity, if I had the the time and the the ability to travel or whatever, I would go to Irwin's house and Garrett and whoever else, except that guy that was mean to me. And I would go to their house and I would help them set up their, their dig unos and their lights. And I would, and I would be happy to do that. It would be okay. Like it's not a hard thing. Um, it's hard to do long distance sometimes. So we try. Being, <laughs> being dose slack. Those slaxic kills passwords. <laughs> um, gosh, so that's not it. You had yours up yesterday. It was beautiful. Come on over. Oh, you're in Lehigh, Brian. Oh, you know what? Have I seen? Have I seen your name? I probably have. And I've I've thought a couple times. We we have gone to a few people's houses to deliver them. That was that was before we had so many orders. Now it's just like, okay, we got to get them going. We got to get these in the mail. Let's go. Let's go. But uh, yeah, we're, we got to, we got to have a uh, hookup. You're in Eagle Mountain and yeah, not far. Garrett, you're in Cedar City. Oh man, I could jump in the RV and be there in no time. <laughs> oh man. I think I will do something along those lines at some point when, when retirement comes, it won't be for a few years yet, but uh, yeah, jo Blade joined the Pixel World yesterday. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, he'd helped me out with a bunch of stuff, as he always does. And so I sent him a little Christmas present. I sent him a little uh, controller and some LEDs to play with. No, I, I'm not allowed in Columbus, Jim. I'm not allowed. I'm on the list. Congratulations, by the way. It's a very interesting year to try and figure out who should be in the playoff, don't you think? I mean, did who did who did Ohio State beat? Like, it's not their fault that they didn't have a lot of teams to beat. That you know, they had a bunch of games canceled. But you got a team like Texas A and M. I think Texas A and M's getting the shaft. I think Notre Dame had their chance. You know, what are we going to watch? Notre Dame Clemson again? Come on. So I think I think we ought to punt Notre Dame and put. Uh, Texas A&M in there. Speaking of helping out, you have the page, you have page figured out again? As long as it is in Ohio State. <laughs> Let me know when you want to fix it. Okay, let's play with it for a second. Let's play with it for a second. Let's go to the office here. Right now it's uh, like, it's got all my segments doing weird things. And I don't want segments right now. Reset segments, sure. Solid. Okay, let's change the color. All right, Blade, page away. Why did that not change the color? Oh, no, connection to light failed. Wait a minute. It's right here. How could the connection to the light fail? <laughs> I went to order Uno the other day and poof, sold out. You know... Tech Turtle, just message me, buddy. I got I got a couple of... Might still be broken on my node red. Well, this is... Now my lights are... Look at this. I don't know why, but all of a sudden my... It's because my Wi-Fi hates me. 
My Wi-Fi hates itself. Boy, lots of subscribers. Thanks everybody for being here. We got a big crew. We got a big, a lot of people watching. I hope we're doing something worthwhile. You need to add a TTS for messages to your Google Hub. Uh, I do, and I have that. Let's, uh, is, is there a, is there a, let's do that. Should, how should we do TTS? Let's do some text-to-speech stuff. I like that. Build it yourself. It's not that hard. Even Dr. Z's can do it. That's true, Kenneth. That's true. Even I can do it. Even I can do it. <clears throat> you do help out a lot on Discord. Cloud TTS. Should we look at Cloud TTS? I have not looked at Cloud TTS. Let's look at it. Let's look at Cloud TTS. Um, but can he? Can I do it? I sure can. It shows what's past. It comes with Nabucasa. Oh, okay. So it means it has to be part of my main home assistant right now. It sounds very nice. Oh, okay, cool. Let's play with it. I'm excited. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do some new tech to speech. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's look at, um, man, oh man, here we go again with the hype train. Thanks, everybody. Here comes the semi-truck choo-choo train. <laughs> um, all right, well, I don't know anything about how to set it up. So let's look at cloud TTS. And uh, Nabucasa. There we go. Google Cloud DTS Home Assistant. Okay. Google Cloud Platform. Uh, no, that's probably not it. Is it? I don't think so. TTS Home Assistant. No. Oh my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just hitting random buttons now. <laughs> I know, that's pretty good, right, Jacob? We're doing good today. It must have changed the notify service API. None of my flows are working. Grr. Oh, try that custom service. Oh, you mean, oh, I see what you're saying. The, the notify service API. Oh, Keaton was here. He could help you. Main reason I haven't been outside the house since March. I could have, I could, we could do text to speech blade. I wouldn't mind. Uh, giving, you know, you and Sir Goodenough and a few other people some text to speech ability too. whether it's, whether it's in chat, uh, you know, through, through, um, Twitch or something or direct to the Google home. I wouldn't mind. I trust you guys. Oh, oh, that, oh, the thing just came on that I'm streaming. So the streaming notification worked. <laughs> okay. So cloud TTS. What? Google Cloud TTS Home Assistant. There it is. Google Cloud TTS. Is this what I'm trying to do? Is this the one? The Google Cloud Platform allows you to use Google Cloud by integrating to them on Home Assistant. I use Google Cloud Platform, but is that what I want? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Obtaining an API key, but with... Uh, with Nabucasa, it's already in, it's already integrated. Cause I shouldn't have to do this. Create a project, project name, it's billing. I don't, shouldn't need all this if I'm doing it through Nabucasa, right? Down. Down, down, down. It's all preset. AWS Poly, and it's amazing. Real, very cool. Up a little, <laughs> down a little, up a little, down a little. What am I supposed to read though, this? Is it just like an integration service Google Cloud say? Is that all I have to do? Oh, Sir Goodenough's going to break his computer. I'm sorry. He's throwing things at it right now. Has anybody used a Raspberry Pi Zero to control lights? Uh, no, my, yeah, yeah, for, for um, Hyperion.
All right, let's find the media player. Display. There's too many media players. I need to just get rid of some of these. This one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I wanted service. Dang it. Media player. Oh, so here I want the service is going to be the cloud thing, right? Okay, thank you. There it is. Let's go with this. All right, with Cloud TTS, you're able to have, thank you very much, Rasby, and probably Sir Goodenough and three or four other people that posted it for me. <laughs> okay, with Cloud TTS, you are able to have text read aloud with natural sounding voices. This service is automatically enabled when you are signed in to your Nabucasa Cloud account and can be called using the TTS Cloud Say service in your automations. Home System version 2020 or is required. Okay. Support gender options, support languages. Wow, that's cool. All right, so here it is. You can select TTS say service from the dropdown. Develop tool services, okay. Media player, what the message is, and then you put in the language and the options. Okay, cool, let's play with it. Let's play with it. All right, services, we're gonna go TTS. S cloud say, and then we're going to go, we need the entity ID, the message. So entity ID, oops, down here, entity ID, cover your eyes, blade, it's YAML. <laughs> you got it up and running, Peter? Sweet. What changed? What worked? What was different? That's great. Oh, it makes me happy. I love it when a plan comes together. <sighs> um, we decided it was media player. Just displaying, right? And then we need the message. this thing on and then language and the language is the options we're just going to do en oh let's not do us that's boring let's do something fun let's do english engb oh ireland really english india english canada oh no come on are they going to like say a eh? <laughs> australia wow Okay, let's do let's do uh, Ireland. That'll be fun. E N and then capital I E. Okay. E N dash I E. Okay, and then uh, let's just do that, and then we'll see what happens. Oh, she's very sweet. She sounds very sweet. You couldn't hear it because it's not very loud. I don't use this thing very much for announcements, but. Volume. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Let's do it again. Can see if you can hear it. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? I gotta spell it out when I want them to say it right. Yes. Okay. Dr. Z's is so super smart and handsome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Okay. Man, that was easy. One more reason to get Nabucasa if you didn't have Nabucasa. I want to see what the Canadian sounds like. Let's see what this Canadian lady sounds like. Is she going to say, let's see what this... We'll just use this. Dr. Z is so super smart and handsome. I want her to say, um, 
I want her to say, if it's Canadian, they got to say, sorry. I was about to go out. <laughs> I want to see how she says it. Sorry, I was about to go out. Oh, she didn't say, I want her to say, sorry, a boot. Oh, yeah, she didn't say a boot. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's fix that. <laughs> Sorry, I was a boot to go O O T. Oh, she spelled O O T. A boot to what? <laughs> a boot. Oh, this is cool. So that is actually really good. Um, wow, that's simple. That is super simple. If you don't have Nabucasa, then you have to go through this process. Uh, and it's similar to when we have to set up uh, Amazon to receive commands or Google to receive commands uh, when you're not using Nabucasa. It just, you can do it. You just have to set up your own stuff. I, t I need to talk to a, a man about a boat. <laughs> uh, uh. I, she sees, she does need to say sorry though. How would you spell sorry? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I need to talk about a man about a boat. Ah, she still doesn't say it right. The gender, to change the gender, let's see. Options, gender, okay. Is that all you got to do? Just option, options. Oh, and it's not indented. Options and then gender. Okay. Canadian is only female. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I failed to call service. So it did say which ones have male and female, and not all of them do. But, like, if this is really cool because it's so many other languages. I really like this. You could use it for Chinese translation. So cool. I want to try this uh, Indian English. I N. Let's try that. And then it's probably not going to be able to do the gender. Oh, oh no, I need this again. Wait, if it's a guy, that'll be that be weird. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't want it to be weird. We don't need to get weird here. Okay. No. Dr. Zeev is so super smart and handsome. Oh my gosh, I love that Indian girl. That's awesome. <laughs> I can talk Dutch now. Well, what happens if I put in like a different language? I don't expect it's going to translate, right? It's not going to be able to translate it. Uh, let's try, let's do Spanish. Spanish Mexico. ESMX. I'm sure it's not going to, well, let's see. Dr. Sisi so super smart and handsome. Oh my gosh, she just had an accent was all. Did you hear that? It just talks with an accent. Oh my gosh. Dr. Sisi so super smart and handsome. Oh, Dr. Z's es gil egru. Okay, this. Oh, thank you very much, Quinor. Let's let's copy this in there. Okay, copy this. Um, paste that in there, and then we gotta have. This is gonna be Dutch, right? Is uh, Dutch Netherlands? Yeah, N L. Uh, there's a difference, huh? Oh, it's Danish. Sorry, Dutch N L N L. Oh, this is fun. Fun stuff.
Dr. Zees is heel erg goed en weet heel veel. Hier er goed, hier er heel veel. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. Hold on, I gotta actually paste that in here with the name of my next uh, D and D character. Yes, <laughs> I need. I need Doctor Z's is so super smart and handsome in Dutch. Oh my gosh, oh, this is. I hope you guys are learning something. Super smart. Doctor Z's is so super smart and handsome. Handsome. <laughs> Do they have Hebrew? Let's see. Uh, yeah, G, yeah, sure do. There's Hebrew, Greek, German, French. So fun. That accent, though. Oh, that accent, though. <laughs> you can't be serious. Hello, you can't be serious. Oh, three. Try this. Okay, Avery, let's try this. Russian accent, please. Okay, let's try this. Russia, are you, are you? Oh my gosh, I love this, dude. This is so much fun. I'm gonna... S so now, here's the other question. This is so super smart and handsome. And handsome. She is so super smart and handsome. You got it working, Garrett? Sweet, what did you do? Wait, there's Greek? Now I'm interested. <laughs> um. Okay, now here is... Here is a... Does this, it was your router? Okay, excellent. That's good news. And I I have a hard time, like, I, I don't want to, um, that is definitely possible in a lot of situations. And it's hard to say, well, did you check your router, you know, but I'm glad you checked it. I'm glad you figured out what was it that what your router was doing? Was your router, was your router blocking it or something? It doesn't work on Betty, Thomas, Seamus. That's what I was afraid of. Darn. This looks like so much fun. I've never been able to get my Google Homes to do text-to-speech, even though I have Nabucasa. Oh, well, now you can. Vex, have you tried it? Try it right now. Let's get it working for you. That's a bummer. It doesn't work with she who shall not be named. But that's okay, because I've got several Google Homes that I can put around the house. <laughs> Suddenly stopped working last update. Uh-oh. Uh, what, what were you using, Toon? Were you using... Uh, Google or we're we using Aleka. Can I call a WLED preset in Home Assistant with the new firmware? Yes, Brian, you can. And the way you do it, it's actually a service call. Um, let's go to a different Home Assistant so we don't mess up that. Let's go to, we have like three Home Assistants open. Uh, this one is the new one. Um, Let's go to the service calls. And it is, I believe it's the, the, the service is WLED. So here there's WLED effect and WLED preset. Now, the reason that there's a WLED effect service isn't so that you can call the effect. You can call the effect here, but you can also call the effect with just the lights on service. So because WLED is integrated into Home Assistant as a light, a WLED entity or device, I guess, is a light. So it, and a light has the ability to run an effect if it has a list of effects, which it does in this case. So you can use it as, as the service light on and then select the effect or use the WLED effect service. And then here are your options. Um, you need to specify the, the, LED, uh, the WLED entity, you can put the name of the effect. I don't think it's required, but you can. The reason that you do it is to put in the intensity, the palette, and the speed. So that's, that's the effect service. And then there's the preset service. The preset service is really just the number. So you put in the, uh, the entity, like for me, it's going to be, um, light dot, uh, office. Oh, because this, 
I'm sorry. It's because this, uh, this, this instance of home assistant doesn't have that in it. Um, but I can use this. This is actually going to, uh, the LEDs behind my screen that are on Hyperion right now. So it'll, it'll play with those a little bit, but because let's see, oh no, they're not running WLED. Oh, that's weird. Oh, they are. They could be. Uh, anyways, you put your light entity in here, whatever it is. I, I'm, I'm on the wrong one. So this one's not going to work. This one's not connected to anything. Office TV. I don't even know where this one's powered on from. And then you just do the preset and then you just do the number. And then, um, you know, whatever number this is really nice because, uh, or in it, it a new addition in WLED 11.1 is air cookie, put the numbers of the presets back in. So in version 11 of WLED, we got the ability to name our presets, which is really nice because I could not remember like preset one was color winkle or preset three was colorful or preset four was running two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now we can put names on them, which is great. But in order to use the presets like that in Home Assistant uh, and in um, macros as well in WLED, which really are just presets in a written in a different way, maybe sort of right. You you use the uh, HTM is it HTML or HTTP, whatever you call it, the API version instead of JSON. You can use these numbers in that way. Yay, Air Cookie. <laughs> He's awesome. All hail Air Cookie. What is my favorite effect? JP Matatan. I think my favorite effect is still Color Winkles, which is Color Twinkle. But um, I said it wrong once. <laughs> I didn't say it wrong once. I, I thought that's really what it was called. And, and uh, then somebody pointed out to me that it's not Color Winkles. It's Color Twinkles. But I didn't see the T. So I call it color winkle and I think color winkle is really pretty. It just kind of, it just throws random colors in random places and just kind of lights them up and they have a very soft kind of come on and off, you know, dimming in and out. It's really cool. I just noticed that cloud TTS requires 2020.12.0 or newer. And I'm a bit older than that upgrading now. There you go, Vex. There you go. That'll do it. Uh, can you try getting the combi two working on home assistant blue? I'm having trouble that it doesn't recognize or find the combi stick. Oh, really? Um, let me see what I'm going to lose when I do that. Okay. Because what will happen when I take that out? Okay. Are we done playing with this? Nabu, this was really fun, by the way. Thank you, sir. Good enough. And everybody else that was, uh, uh Rasby and whoever else I don't remember was, um, giving me pointers on how to do this. I am absolutely going to do this. I've been looking at my, I have at least two Google home devices that bounce around that are, that are actually not even plugged in. So I think grand total in the house, we have four Google home devices. My biggest complaint about the Google home devices is that you cannot connect external speakers to them. Mm. That's a real bummer that I can't just plug in a, a, audio jack and hook it up to some extra speakers. That really bums me out. That's why I filled the house with Alecas instead, because I like hooking them up to external speakers, bigger, fancier speakers. So only Google can do it. Aleka cannot do it. You could, if you solder Dynamit, can I open it up and do that? I guess I could. I tried doing it with the Bluetooth and it didn't really work that well. It did. It does, but it doesn't really. All right, let's play with something else. Let's play with, uh, who just asked me this question? Rasby wants to do a shout out to the community. Absolutely. I don't have a 3D printer and needed something printed on Facebook. A member of the community offered to print it for me for free. Fantastic. We have a great community, don't we? We have like 14, there's like, I think last time I looked, there was something like 14,000 people on the Facebook group. And I don't, I, I go on there every once in a while. I probably not even once a day. First live, go blue, just saying. Do we know if we have a coach for next year yet or not? I think we're gonna find out Tuesday. The iFixit have a guide to open it. Oh, the combi, thank you very much. 
It was about the combi. Okay, yes. So let me look at decons and see what I'm going to, what am I going to miss if I disconnect it? Uh oh. I want to see what, oops, dang it. I want to see what lights I have connected to decons. Okay. All right, so I will be missing, I'll see, it'll mess up a couple of my temperature sensors, but I need to actually move those anyways. Oh, it's going to mess up a lot of my sensors. My, my. um, Facebook, boo, not a fan. Some people really like Facebook, and so I'm glad we have a Facebook group for those that do. Dang. Uh, I need to switch this over, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it over to a different device and run ZHA. Uh, so I'm a little worried if I take that Combi 2 out. I guess I can take it out and just plug it back in, right? Yeah, I'll just take it out and plug it back in in a minute. All right. Okay. So I just pulled my combi two stick out of my, um, Proxmox box. Bad idea. Yeah. It's going to break. All right. Now I've plugged it in famous last words for the person trying to run combi, set it to ZHA rather than decons. Well, that might be it. Avery. See if at least Home Assistant on the Blue recognizes it. Yeah, let's just see if it does. So I should just be able to go here. This is my blue, right? Yes, it is. And I should just be able to go to the um, system. And isn't there, a, where do you see it? I thought there was a way to see it. Hardware. Uh, USB. I don't know. Uh, is this where you would see it? I don't see. Let's see if we can, let's see if we need to reboot it. Let's just try re rebooting the whole thing. Restart the supervisor. Reboot. This will reboot the whole thing, right? Reboot the host OS. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll see. Not loaded my Zigbee yet. I think I'm going to use the Mount Tasmoda bridge and Zigbee to MQTT to direct it. Um, I, I think I probably will flash. Let me know how you do, sir. Good enough, because I have the Zigbee bridge as well, and I may use it, but I don't know for sure. It's probably one of the TTYS USB devices. I was thinking it might be. But let's reboot and see if it shows up. Thank you, sir. Good enough. That'll be awesome. Good night, Dave Davies. Thanks for being here. I hope we helped you out. I'm glad you got some stickers. We always have to break something, right? It wouldn't be a very good stream if we didn't break anything. <laughs> um, in the meantime, let's ask, let's answer some questions. Let's go back to the Ask channel down here. And I should go in order because I think I was going from bottom to top and I need to go from top to bottom. Combi to the blue. Okay, that's what we just do it for. Mar oh, that's for you. Oh, that's for. Okay, Mark put that in there. Thank you. Okay. I have no clue how to do effects on the Zigbee RB doubles. Can you give me a hint? Uh, I don't either. I don't either. And Ilge. Sorry. I don't have any Zigbee RGBW bulbs. Sorry. Ask Paul Hibbert. Uh, when lighting an indoor tree with pixels, should they go vertically and snake up and down, wrap around? I want to get 400 on the tree to make some nice animations. What is the best practice to allow for some serious animations? Um, you're, so I saw an article 
it somewhere on the internet that said that the new trend is to do lights up and down like this on your Christmas tree. Um, if certainly if you want to make it, if you want to control it with X lights and you want to have it sort of make a picture, you know, or do something like that, like you want it to be sort of like a, a matrix. When we do mega trees, mega, a mega tree is really just a, an odd shaped matrix. That's what, that's the benefit of it. So if you want to do that, then yeah, you need to go up and down. But if you're using WLED, in most cases, the effects are going to go from the start to the end. You can reverse that if you want, but they're going to go linear. So you won't be able to do up, down, up, down. I mean, you could do up, down, up, down. But like for me, for our tree, I like the fire effect. Kind of sick maybe, but I like to try and make it look like the tree is on fire. <laughs> so I do start at the bottom. And I, we wrapped all the way around this year in, in years past, I've wrapped, you know, kind of go back and forth like this. But what I found when, if I go back and forth is that the sides are really have a lot of extra lights. The, our tree faces a window. If we wrap all the way around, we kind of get the reflection off the window and we get the reflection or we can see it outside. So, so we just start at the bottom and wrap up. Is that right or wrong? You know, do you wipe front to back, back to front? I don't know. It's, it's sixes probably, but for what it's worth. That's how I do it. Doc can talk while that's going. That's right. How do you ask a question? There you go. Seamus will show you. Okay, let's see. When lighting the indoor tree, there we got that. All right. Sir Charles, three of four Nova floodlights not showing gateway or DNS server have Tasmoda 9.1 firmware. All are controllable by IP. Uh, so you can log into them with the IP address. I don't know what Nova floodlights are exactly, um, but they're not showing gateway or DNS server. So they're not showing, you can't go to them by going to like dot local. Is that what you mean? I'm sorry. I don't know what that, I don't know what you mean exactly by that. If you can get to them by IP address, where can you not get to them? I'm not a very good network guy. So maybe. You help, uh, you can help him, sir, good enough? Okay. They are showing a red X. Huh. Hello, Mitch. How's it going? But the browser works. I don't know. Not sure. Let's back, let's go back here and look at hardware again and see if anything else showed up that was new. Yeah, nothing new showed up. So they're not showing up here, but it could be this. Let's uh let's take it out and see if it changes. I'm going to go put it back in my regular thing. Looks like mine. Try adding the ZHA integration. The ZHA auto detects. Oh, I took it out already. Let's put it back in and see if it. All right. All right, so then let's go to the ZHA integration here. Integrations. Man, this integrations list is long. Let's see if it finds it. Nope. It's not automatically, it's not detecting it, so I would have to enter it manually. So let's see if I can do it with a different stick. So I do have a different one. Yeah, I'm sure that if they, that I know that like Frank uses the combi 
<laughs> so um, I'm sure that it will work at some point. I'm just not, not sure, um, you know, if something's missing, some driver or something, I don't know. Had to reboot to make it find your stick. Okay, let's reboot again. Invalid config. Oh. Okay, we're going to wait on that a minute. Uh, ZHA works with my IT stick, but need patience to learn them. Can you SSH into the machine and run? Oh, you can SSH into the machine and run D message reboot or restart. I'm just rebooting the whole thing. If I reboot that, like this is the whole operating system, right? So that should reboot everything. Zigbee MQTT had a nice upgrade. Followed the docs fit on Zigbee to MQTT and it has been solid. Oh, good. I didn't know I had a video on Zigbee to MQTT. Do you know how to let your ESP home LEDs react to music? Um, the uh, LED effects, and I need to play with it again. It's been a long time. LED effects. I did a video about it last year. Air Cookie says it's still very solid. It works good. Oh, there's a graphic interface now with Zigbee to MQTT. No effect. Might have, might be that the ports on blue are USB 3. Oh, they are USB 3. I'm pretty sure. Is that a problem? I didn't know that would be a problem. Anyways, LED effects. Uh, I've got a video from last year about it. It's probably still reasonably accurate. Things change fast, you know. Remember when invalid config was a huge issue? Yep. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to keep answering questions here because we are getting close to the two o'clock time. The witching hour. Uh, is there a way? Let's see. Today. Yeah, make sure. I'm... Oh, whoa. Did the questions refresh? Did we lose some questions? Huh. Okay. Is there a way to pull devices that are on? Oh, we already read that one. Whoa. I just knocked my mouse off the desk. Any idea what I could do with extra Arduinos? I have around 70 brand new boxes laying around from a project. I was thinking about donating to a school or something. Yeah, donating to a school would be a good idea. Um, I don't know what you could do with 70 of them. What are they, just Unos or Minis or what? I have a little annoying issue with fully kiosk and home assistant. Motion eye camera feeds will not render on an Android tablet. Oh, that's weird. Any idea if I need to add something to the tablet to make it work? Oh, Crasher. I don't know. Darn it. I'm sorry. I do not know that. Maybe somebody else does. Anybody else know that? Is it pos possible to change from CC2531 to a Combi 2 without reconnecting all of the devices? No, I don't think so. I think you have to reconnect all the devices. Oh, there you go. Martin says, change your camera to H264. I don't have a USB 2 adapter available right now to try it either. H265 can be an issue. Thank you, Martin. Martin's tech stuff. You would not have to redo everything. Really? Where do I add my question? Go to ask. Uh, put in a tilde ask. Oh, is it exclamation point ask? No, exclamation point ask tells you how to do it. Thank you, Justin, by the way. That Justin Z, uh, not to be confused with, confused with Justin Dr. Z. <laughs> Justin Z, was that you that was on the, the home assistant? Uh, stream wasn't there a justin z on there is that you probably was because you did you you busted out that that uh twitch stream notification like nothing i did it by the way last night and it worked beautifully 
You do tilde ask. Tilde. You're deleting the questions I got to already. Thank you, sir. Good enough. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. Is the Pi Zero a bit weak for Hyperion? I had it running flawlessly on a Pi 4, but after changing to Pi Zero, the LEDs started flickering. Uh, it could be, if, if what you see is flickering, it could be that the Pi Zero is not outputting, um, I don't know if you're going to say enough current on the GPIO pins, but it may be a, a, if you're connected to the GPIO pins and you have a long wire, it could be that the Pi Zero is too weak in signal strength. I think processing power, it's probably okay. Obviously, there's a big difference between the Pi Zero and the Pi Four as far as processing power, but I think the Zero as, par as far as processing power should be fine. But as far as data signal strength, it might be weak. So you could try, well, I don't know if a sacrificial pixel would work in that case, because with Hyperion, you can't skip the first LED, I don't think, unless they change that. So you could try a logic level shifter or try putting, a, you know, just a shorter wire and see if that works. Connect the GPIO logic level shifter, maybe. Yeah, try logic level shifter, maybe. What is the benefit of Zigbee over the built-in home assistant Zigbee integration? Um, probably, Jason, the, to, in my opinion, the, the reason to use one of the integration software over a different one is because of the compatibility with devices. So if you go to Black Adder, uh, oops, Black Adder has a Zigbee, Black Adder's a dude, Black Adder's Zigbee, database of compatible Zigbee devices, Black, zigbee.blackadder.com. I hope this guy gets some ad revenue from this, he's, he should. This will tell you what devices are compatible with which software. And you can't really see it because my screen's dark, but Tasmoda is here. This is ZHA or Zigbee Home Automation. This is the one you're talking about is integrated in home system. Zigbee and MQTT, Decons, and then there's a couple others. Um, so if you have, oh, it's time. It's two o'clock, here goes the window. If you have a device that is not compatible with ZHA, then you may need Zigbee to MQTT to use it, okay? Jason says, when will Dig Unos be available to purchase? Uh, they, we are cracking. Hey, Black Adder, he's here. I hope you're getting ad revenue for this. Let's donate to Black Adder. How do we donate to Black Adder? This, this is such a useful tool, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting this together. That's funny. He said, he's a dude. <laughs> he is a dude. Uh, Anyways, th that's the reason to use one thing over the other. So Zigbee MQTT versus uh, ZHA or Tasmoda or Decons is about, it's about compatibility with the devices that you want to use. So not every device is compatible with every software. Then Zigbee MQTT is, is definitely up there. What do you think, Black Adder? Have you noticed one is more compatible or compatible with more things than others? I really like ZHA. So, and, and fortunately for me so far, all of the Zigbee things that I've tried to incorporate have been compatible with ZHA. Does Black Adder, did you do the temples? You did, you did that too? The Tasmoda templates? Man, he's a, he's a dude with capital D. Uh, can skip the first pixel in Hyperion. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, Mark. So you can skip the first pixel. So for whoever was having that flickering trouble with their Pi Zero, you might be able to use a sacrificial pixel. Poor man's uh, easy to wire um, logic level shifter. And then I guess you can start, Mark says he looked at Hyperion and it looks like you can start from LED one instead of LED zero. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, look at you, Nightbot. Sir, good enough. You are just always coming up with new stuff. Thanks, man. So Black Adder, yeah, templates, Black Adder. There it is, the Tasmoda templates. That is another, another huge resource. What a superstar. I really like Decons because it is not integrated in Home Assistant. When I reboot Home Assistant, Decons is a separate Docker. It stays online, advantage for you. 
ZHA, decons, and the rest should theoretically work with a standard Zigbee device, so the list tends to be sporadic since not everyone reports compatibility. Oh, I got you. Okay. ZHA, decons, and the rest should theoretically be compatible with standard Zigbee devices. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's go down here. Oh, I'm going to knock my thing off again. Uh, short wire. Okay. Just wondering if you have an advice on an MQTT topic path naming convention. Lots of ways this could be done. Yeah. Bitstorm. I don't, I typically stick with whatever. Um, I, I like really honestly right now I'm only using MQTT for Tasmoda stuff for the most part. I'm trying to think if there's other reasons when I use ESP home, I just use the API and then WLED. I'm not using the MQTT anymore because it also connects directly via API. Um, and I just use the Tasmoda, you know, cause Tasmoda has a group topic and some of those things, maybe some others have some good opinions about good ways to not get confused. Uh, let's see a couple more questions. Is there any way of using a USB dongle Xiaomi LCD temperature sensor? in home assistant. Ooh. Is there uh did you look in this? So it's a touch screen, it's a Zigbee touch screen. Oh, it's not touch screen, it's just LCD. LCD. Xiaomi temperature and humidity sensor, something like this. But this is probably not a LCD. T1? Nope. Oh. Maybe somebody has already seen that. That's probably the Bluetooth one. Oh, maybe it is. Maintain the list. I have like 0.05% of the devices listed. <laughs> Travis did a stream on those sensors. Oh, did he? Okay. So check out, um, uh, check out DigiBlur maybe Bjorn. Does LED effects work with home assistant? It does. 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 I need to play with it again, but, uh, yes, there is a home assistant something. Hey, look at this guy. Look at this guy with the music here. I thought I saw LED effects home assistant. Yeah. LED effects home assistant. I don't know where it is anymore. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know what the current status is. Oh, it looks like it's an add on. Frank made a community store add on. So there you go. Oh yeah. I played with this. That's right. I remember this now. I remember this now because with the microphone, you could see this thing like jumping and you could or you could change how the lights, you could watch the lights with the music and stuff. Yeah, I remember playing with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a bunch of Bluetooth sensors. Bluetooth doesn't seem to be able to cover my entire house. Dang it. And Bluetooth doesn't do a mesh, right? Like Zigbee, you, you can't like use powered devices to jump it farther. So no soldering needed. Just skip the first one inside Hyperion. Um, well, you'll still need, so the sacrificial pixel thing, you got to put that first pixel, you got to cut it and put that first pixel right next to the Raspberry Pi zero and then run wires from that first pixel to the rest of the pixels. So yeah, there is soldering involved. If you're going to use a sacrificial pixel. If we're talking BLE, Xiaomi temperature sensor, I have a complete series of using ESP32s to read them and send a home assistant using ESP home. There you go. Intermittent tech, Sir Gooden, or uh, Quindor. Blah, blah. Did you see these, Quindor? Were you on last night when I, when I was playing around with these? I've got these. Uh, these are these development boards. They came really fast from Mouser. So these are ESP32 Ethernet development boards to play with. Ooh. I'm not going to play with them for light control though. I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to play with them for smart switch stuff because I would like to replace some of my 
light switches and such with this kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. I didn't even try them yet, dude. I haven't even plugged them in. I took them out of the package and I put them here on my desk. I haven't done anything else with them. I have been so overwhelmed, you guys. Oh, my word. I need some, I need some meditation. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a little past two. Um, we should probably end for today. Here's the question. No, let's do it tomorrow. Okay. I was going to say, do we want to try and do another stream tonight? I think we're actually already, this is like the 10th of the 12 streams of Christmas. I think we only officially need two more to, to, to be 10. My plan is to stream tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Even if I pass 12, I streamed twice yesterday to, because I'm not sure that over the next three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that I will be able to stream every day. I'm going to do my best. Going to do my best. Yeah, we'll do the 14. <laughs> Did I unpack all by myself, Patrick? <laughs> what are you talking about? One through 20. <laughs> all right, let's do... Oh, did the blue find the dongle? Let's, that's right. We never did check that. Let's, let's do that again. All right. So it's still this. Let's copy this just in case we need that and see if that will work in decons or in uh, ZHA anyways. So let's go to integrations. Let's find ZHA. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, come on, man. What was it? Was that what we were going to check? I thought we were going to check something else. Zigbee. Yeah, Bitstorm. If I, well, I don't, I don't have any Z Wave, so I can't say. Um, press submit. Oh. Oh, look at that. Nope, failed to connect. Um, what else did it say? Let's open another one. Let's open another one and see. So I don't want it to go through that part again. So let's go through another. This will be the last thing we do. I, that looked really good. I, I, I thought for a minute we were going to get it, but we didn't. Uh, it's got to be one of these serials, huh? So TTY S012 or 3. Let's just try it. S zero. Nope. S one. Nope. S two. Nope. S three. Nope. All right. Well, there you go. It's not no worky. Try a different USB port. Gosh, does that mean I have to reboot again? We may have to come back to this. I mean, it's probably not going to do any good if I just switch that right now. <laughs> but since I'm here, might as well try it. AML0. Yeah. Well, I'll have to try it again. Um, let's, let's keep this going though. I'm sure, I'm sure that, uh, at some point, uh, if there is a major issue with, um, the combi two and the blue or the Odroid, it will get resolved. 
I have no doubt because that's a very important little little bit of little bit of tech, little bit of gear. So, alrighty, alrighty, righty. Tried power down everything imaginable. The only thing I can have is an adapter cable. All right, let's call up the kids for sign off and then we'll get to bed. Hit it with a hammer. Get a sign off Zigbee Bridge. Is this setup running as a VM? No. Nope. Nope, it's not. This is the Odroid. This is the Odroid with Home Assistant OS. Installed directly on it. Yeah, exactly right, Mark. That's exactly right. That's why WLED works so well. Oh, so and I'm sweet. making a banana right now. So sweet. I How's it going, girls? Oh, look at your sweet. A puzzle. You're making a puzzle. All right. Oh, like, and here comes Zofe. Like drawing a puzzle. You're drawing a puzzle. Oh, that's fun. And I'm painting it. All right. Who are we missing? Is everybody in the screen? There we need no. Gracie. Okay. So, how do you want to sign off today, girls and boys? Uh, girls and boys. How many more do you have? <laughs> only a couple. Only like four. Only a couple. Yeah. Only like maybe First two. Five days. Yeah, but I started early so that I could have some days because next week I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Um, Everybody say bye. What do you think? What do you, how do you want to sign off? Headless sack? Uh, Grinch. Like Mr. the Grinch? Like the Grinch. Okay, we're going to sign off like the Grinch. Ready? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Wait, are we supposed to do the good Grinch or the bad Grinch? I did the bad Grinch. You did the good Grinch? The Grinch. <laughs> that was the very much, uh, whatever his name is, Jim Carrey Grinch. All right, everybody, have a good day. We will see you hopefully tomorrow. We're going to try for 3 o'clock, but if I need to adjust the time based on work, i got to do what you got to do, okay? Have, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being here, and thanks for...